there's absolutely no reason to buy another lead acid cranking battery for your boat ever again. They're obsolete. It's time to consider something else. The consideration is a lightweight lithium battery that's going to definitely get the job done for you. This is the Rodoto 20 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. It is a dedicated cranking battery. This isn't a deep cycle battery. This is for cranking over the big motor. This is rated to about 135 horsepower, so it's turning over my 115 just fine. Uh, the specs on it from a hot cranking standpoint, 900 amps. A marine cranking amps, which is a kind of a normal temperature, 810 cold, 810 MCA cranking amps. So plenty of capacity. You know, if you're already running a battery today on whichever size motor you have that needs eight to 900 cranking amps, consider this. This is probably going to work out just fine for you. Now you may be a little bit gun shy because it says it's a 20 amp hour battery. Yeah, that's very small. It's only nine and a half pounds. This thing's like a, it feels like a toy. Um, the 20 amp hour is, is you're going to get by with that because it's not a long deep cycle battery. You know, it's not like your trolling motor battery is constantly pulling 30 amps off of it. You're only running the, the, the starter on the motor for just a couple of seconds at a time, right? Maybe one to two seconds, maybe five. If it was, you know, you had some issues trying to get your two strokes started on a cold morning, right? And you have to crank it over a little bit more. So you're able to get a lot of uh, surge capacity out of these batteries, especially with the BMS that's in them. The BMS is definitely designed for cranking applications. So the high current, high currents coming through it. It has low temperature charge protection. So it has the capability of turning off, basically charging the battery while you can still discharge it. And it's gonna get the job done for you. Uh, definitely in a marine cranking application. It's a group U1. So it is actually the same size as a lawnmower battery. So if you're familiar with like a riding mower, they use something like this as well. So I keep tossing this thing around because it feels like a toy, like, like it's ridiculous how light this thing is. So for a comparison's sake, uh, nine and a half pounds, this weighs more than this battery. And you've probably carried a few of these in, right, uh, over the years. Maybe that's not your, your flavor of choice, but uh, you kind of get an idea for what this thing weighs. It's extremely light, whereas your lead acid battery today is probably pushing 40, 50 pounds. So a lot of weight reduction, especially for those folks that have an electric start smaller motor, Right, you're carrying this to your John boat. I'd much rather carry this to a John boat than a big old lead acid battery. Cycle life is fantastic out of these. You're going to get thousands and thousands of cycles out of it. Um, and you're not going to have to really worry about it. It's going to be there for a long time. Whereas those lead acids, you know, two, three years, right? You start to question, is it time to, to, to do something else? Because when you're on the water, the last thing you want to do is hear that, ka -ka 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 -ka, that clicking sound of your your armature not being able to pull in and, and turn that starter over. That is not what you want, right? Now the price point on this, I know it varies, so I'm not even gonna comment on the dollar figure, but it's well within striking distance of a cranking battery. And I'll put links down below in the description for you to check that out. It's very comparable, especially when you look at how long it will last you. The ROI on that is definitely gonna be there. It does pass the standards for the ABYC, the American Boat and Yacht Council. So there's a lot of certifications that they go through and approve different products. And this passes all those. It's UL certified. It's IP67 waterproof rated. So it's ready to go. This is a dedicated cranking battery. I keep harping on that because it's not some repurposed, you know, deep cycle battery that's going to get you by for a little bit. It is made just for it. It's got M6 terminals on it. So make sure that you get them nice and tight. You know, if there's any, you know, if you've got a bigger terminal, like an, an eight millimeter that's probably on your boat, this guy has. You know, use a washer. Make sure you get a good clamp load on it. Make sure your terminals are tight. Uh, I've had absolutely no problems with it. I, I took out my dual purpose battery, put this one in, and then a 100 amp hour for my electronics. And, you know, so I've been basically running this for the accessories and the big motor, just like it would any other installation. So we did do a test on it here with the recent weather in Texas. So let's go ahead and catch that. So what better way to test if this tiny little Rodoto lithium battery will start my boat than in the snow. We finally have some cold weather here in North Texas. Let's do a quick start. I'm intentionally just gonna fire it up and shut it off, but let's see if it'll do it. It's spent all night out in the snow. This thing is not as cold as you're gonna get one. All right, I have it set up just a temporary. Let me show you what I'm working with here. This is just a temporary setup. We'll do a, some full content on this here in a little bit. So this is the only thing hooked up to the main motor here. This is our Rodoto 20 amp hour cranking battery. And let's go ahead and light it off. Here goes nothing.
like nothing. I was actually pretty good, right? I mean, it kicked right over like nothing. Uh, I was expecting it since this motor's been outside for quite some time to slow crank a little bit, but as I can prove to you in sub-freezing conditions, this thing will crank over your big motor, like no problem. Well, that's as cold as I can get it here, right? So that's a true testament to me. You know, I left that battery literally out in the snow, let it snow on it all night and turned over a cold motor like it was nothing. You would have thought it was a nice warm day. Another thing to consider is how do you charge these batteries? You know, historically there's been challenges with lithium batteries. This one is rated for a lithium or it's approved for a lithium by Mercury. It's, it's got a stator on it. And you know, some of the older two strokes and stuff, I've heard people have some success with them. I've heard them not have success. And where you have to navigate through that information is what battery were they using? Were they using a true marine lithium cranking battery or were they trying to get by with like a deep cycle? That definitely has different functionality when it comes to charging it and what it does when it's full, it'll cut that thing off. So make sure you're getting that source of truth and, and, and really asking those questions of what they're dealing with. It's not for every motor. So you're gonna have to, to navigate through that on the older motors. Some of these, they're already approved, drop it in and go. Uh, charging wise, it will take up to 80 amps from an alternator or from the outboard. Typically, that will charge super fast. 20 amp hour battery, you hook it up to a 10 amp you know, multi-bank charger that you already have, it'll be charged in two hours. If it was completely flat, which it probably never will be because uh, it charges fast and it doesn't take a lot to turn over a motor. It's got a lot of power in it. So like I said, I'll have links down in the description. If this is something you're interested in, feel free to check it out. I'm pretty impressed with the Rodoto battery.